So the topic of G4 has been red hot on the internet for the last couple of days. And this is all going back to Indiana Black's public meltdown that she had on a recent episode of X-Play. Where she called the fan base of X-Play a bunch of sexists and denounced their sexist attitude. Now I've already covered her comments in another video. So if you'd like to check those out, you can click on the link below. But I want to talk about more specifically the history of G4. There's a lot of people who have a romanticized vision in their head about what G4 was and how good the network actually was in its heyday. As someone who started watching G4 back in 2002 when the network launched on digital cable, I can honestly tell you that G4 was never as good as you thought it was. G4 was a gaming network that launched during the early days of the digital cable era. Back in the days in the early 2000s, for the first time, households had the ability to access hundreds of channels that they didn't previously have before. Now, you can argue that G4 for its time in 2002, even in their later part of the 2000s, was well before its time. A lot of G4's early programming were actually precursors to what we've seen today with modern day esports competition that are primarily dominate Twitch and YouTube of today. One of the oldest shows from the old G4 was Arena. Two teams playing in video game competitions against one another to a tournament style until there's only one team left. G4 was also very innovative in the early days of interaction with a show called G4 TV, a show G4 TV was an interactive talk show that focused on gaming, gaming news, they talked with insiders, their panel hosts, they even talked with members of their own community back in the days of the G4 TV online forums. G4 had a pretty solid premise. The problem lies that they didn't have much of an outreach. Back in the early days of G4, they were only available in about 15 million homes in the United States of America. It goes without saying, G4 didn't really have much of an audience or budget back in the day in their early stages. Now, the way that they came about fixing this problem was through acquisition. Comcast was the owner of G4, and they decided that the only way that they can get the network to grow to levels that they were satisfied with was by purchasing another popular digital cable network at the time known as Tech TV. Now, Tech TV was pretty much the flip side of what G4 was as far as the uh, nerd universe, I guess you can say, was. Because while G4 focused on video games, Tech TV focused more on technology, gadgets, and the early stages of the internet. Now, Tech TV, however, had two big things going for them that G4 did not. Programming and outreach. One of Tech TV's flagship programs was X-Play. Yes, the X-Play you know from today that is synonymous with the old school G4 actually came from Tech TV back in the early 2000s. Now this was a show that was called Extended Play that took place on ZDTV before it was renamed X-Play on Tech TV. And the idea of the show was pretty simple. You would have Morgan Webb and Adam Sessler come together and give informative and pretty entertaining and hilarious video game reviews where they would go into the details about you know the concept of the game, the mechanics, the graphics, the controls, things of that nature. But the Screensavers was a show that focused mainly on computers, technology, and grew a huge following during the early stages of the Tech TV network. Tech TV had actually built up a pretty solid category of original shows. Due to their deal with DirecTV, Tech TV actually had four times the outreach that G4 had with many syndicated popular shows such as Anime Unleashed, Robot Wars UK, Unscrewed with Martin Sargent, Tech TV had created a much bigger fan base. That, that changed when Tech TV owner, Microsoft billionaire Paul Allen, decided that he wanted to sell the company in order to put that money towards other goals. So in 2004, Comcast bought Tech TV from Allen's company and announced that they were going to merge the two networks. G4 and Tech TV will become G4 Tech TV. Initially, the announcement was actually met with pretty well response from fan bases from both sides because the endless possibilities of combining the two fan bases presented a scenario of the best of both worlds. However, 
Shortly after purchasing Tech TV, Comcast pretty much did everything in their power to kill the merger. By purchasing Tech TV, they brought all of the Tech TV employees from San Francisco down to Los Angeles to be a part of the G4 Tech TV merger. Now, less than a year after the merger took place, G4 fired the overwhelming majority of the employees that they brought in from the San Francisco audience. The only show that got left on escape was X-Play, which was the only show that had anything to do with video games from the Tech TV lineup, and it was the only show that merged perfectly with G4's target audience. By 2005, G4 Tech TV had rebranded once again to simply become G4. Comcast got it what they needed, an increased outreach and an increase in advertising revenue. But in the process of getting what they wanted, Comcast had essentially burned their bridge with the fan base that they acquired from Tech TV. Fans of Tech TV were furious once they realized Comcast had no intention whatsoever of creating the gaming and tech giant that they had all envisioned from the previous year. Tech TV and its legacy had pretty much died by 2005. In the years to come, G4 had began this rise in relevance in the world of pop culture, but the fall of the network had already begun, even when it was in its peak. By 2007, G4 became a channel that largely relied on syndication. The network was heavily criticized as the majority of its 24-hour programming relied on shows such as, such as Cops, Cheaters, Heroes, and other popular syndicated shows. G4 became desperate for new content to keep audiences engaged and keep their advertisers happy. They even began replaying some of the older shows from the early 2000s Tech TV G4 days in order to keep viewers happy, but it wasn't enough. By the late 2000s, G4 had essentially become a two-show network, X-Play and Attack of the Show. Viewers became increasingly uninterested and uninspired by 20-hour blocks of cheaters reruns that wasn't going to keep anyone from watching a channel, especially a channel that they had to pay premium prices to watch in the first place. The novelty had pretty much worn off of expansion digital cable networks. As cable prices increases, customers wanted one thing, quality, and by 2010, G4 couldn't provide the quality to the customers. By 2010, DirecTV delivered the death blow, which would be the eventual end of G4 as a network. They removed G4 from its channel lineup. DirecTV cited low viewership and the brutal condemnation that the service provider saw no value in G4 for its customers. Five years was pretty much all it took from G4 to go from the euphoria of purchasing Tech TV to become one super network to essentially burning his bridge with all of his customers to the point where even DirecTV and other cable providers had no intention of keeping G4 around. After being dropped by DirecTV, G4 barely stayed around for a couple of more years, but within two years, the two shows that kept the whole thing afloat, X-Play and Attack of the Show, were discontinued. G4 originals were basically fired and forced to find new work. By the time we got to 2014, NBC Universal had pulled the plug on all funding towards G4. It was essentially a dead network. When we look back at what G4 was and why it was popular in the first place, if we're being honest with ourselves, G4 had about a good three to four year run where shows like X-Play and Attack of the Show actually did have a good connection with the 18 to 34 male demographic that it was targeting at the time. But if you go back and you watch a lot of those shows of Attack of the Show, they really don't hold up as well as you think that they do. A lot of the humor was pretty much not that funny. X-Play was a show that was known for its quirky video game reviews, but even they decided towards the mid-2000s that they didn't want to be the quirky video game review channel anymore. They wanted to be more serious, so they ended up doing less reviews. They focus more on insider news, video game news, interviews, and occasionally they would do video game reviews, but it wasn't the same that it was back in the early 2000s. G4 tried for years to find something original that would hook the audience into buying into their network and growing its viewer base, but they never found it. After the original death of G4, the fan base pretty much splintered into multiple different outlets. Chris Hardwick, who was a G4 original, created his own platform, Nerdist Industries, which actually did a very solid following on the internet, such as YouTube, 
In the gaming world, outlets such as YouTube and Twitch led to the rise of esports, let's play, gaming news, and original content featuring video games. Essentially, people who used to watch G4 found other outlets get their video game related entertainment for. While it's hard to call G4 a complete failure, it's even really hard to call them a complete success either. They had a solid run. They had a good few years where they could have had something, but they really couldn't pull the trigger. Perhaps they could have built something that would have held with tech fans, gaming fans, and competition fans for many years to come. But no matter what G4 could have been, the reality is, is that what G4 actually was, was a string of good ideas that never had the right execution. G4 was good, but it was never great. And while the new G4 may be pissing away his legacy with old school fans, one can only hope, hey, maybe someone decides to bring back Tech TV. Then again, seeing how well things are going with the new G4, maybe it's better off just leaving Tech TV dead in the past.